GitHub Copilot has a few people scared. I made a whole entire video about what GitHub Copilot is and my thoughts about how it's going to affect the job market in the future. But let's talk about the job market now. It is being called the best developer job market since the dot-com boom. That is in over 25 years, 20 years. That is in over 20 years. Before we get started, I have a question for all of y'all. What do you think of my little cubby hole here? I decided to change up my office a little bit. I always feel the urge every three, four months to just move something around, change the scenery, and this is what I got going on. I got to clean up over there, but I think this will help record my keyboard video, the PC video that I have on the horizon. So I don't know, I'm kind of liking it. What do you think? All right, now time to get down to business. So sit back, relax, drink some coffee. We're going to talk about how 2021 is, again, the best developer job market since the dot-com boom. Now you may be thinking exactly what I thought and that's these numbers are inflated. They're just looking at the numbers from 2020, comparing them to 2021. And obviously they're gonna see an increase overall because 2020 just was downhill for basically every single industry that there is. But that is not exactly the case because although we were projecting a 4% growth in tech jobs throughout 2020, we didn't go down. We actually still increased 2.4% throughout 2020 in spite of the pandemic. The numbers for the available jobs and job postings that there are may be inflated because they say in quarter one that it is quarter one of 2021 that it has increased 16%. And I believe even better numbers for quarter two. I could be wrong on that. But despite all the numbers percentages comparing it to previously, US employers not just in the tech industry, are reporting their strongest hiring outlook since 2000. Take with that what you will, but that kind of proved to me that we're not just comparing the numbers to 2020 and saying how great 2021 is like a lot of other numbers. We're actually looking at how it's been over the past few decades and saying that this is like it was in the dot-com boom for developer jobs. Because with that hiring outlook, the unemployment rate for tech jobs is still around that average of 2.2%. And not only are there more jobs available, is there really low unemployment rate, but the salary from late 2019 to late 2020, mind you, the pandemic began, what, February, March of 2020, tech jobs actually saw the average salary increase by 3.6%. Now this may not seem like much, but when it comes to 2017, 2018, and 2019, year over year, we've been seeing less than 1% of a salary increase. So 3.6% in one year is more than what we've seen overall in the previous three years. And get this, with the salary increases, with everything that I just mentioned, the first half of 2021, we saw a global record uh, number for venture capital investments with $288 billion being invested in startups. Now, when they say startups, I couldn't really get a grasp of what kind of startups or if it's just overall startups and how that works. But many, if not all startups need some sort of tech job, whether that be some CTO, some IT guy, or more than likely a developer position. That's kind of a random data point that I pulled from a different article, whereas most of this data is coming from a DICE report that I'll link in the description below if I remember. Again, I always forget that, but I'll try to remember. And just so you know, I'm aware that in the title I say developer job market, but in the video I continually say tech jobs, and that is because it is overall tech jobs. But when I'm talking about tech jobs, these are the top skills that they're really talking about. And as you can see, the vast majority, if not all of these, are developer job skills. Anything from the languages that you learn to the project management to agile development. These are the skills that people are looking for and these are the skills used by software developers. So yes, this is mostly directed towards developer jobs. And with all of this coming into play and what we have seen from businesses and employers and how they're kind of bending at the knee when it comes to their employees and their workers and people who they're looking, looking to hire, this is a workers market. So you have a lot more leverage than you may think. I remember reading this article where this person talked about interviewing for a developer job at YouTube, and he was tested for five straight hours on algorithms. This is, this is one of the craziest technical interviews that I've heard of. But now there are plenty of companies that are actually waiving the technical interview overall because they just want to hire you so much faster. They're, they're loosening up their restrictions when it comes to the actual interview to get you in the seat of that position. But something you have to be wary of are the pressure tactics because they're trying to fill these positions so fast. 
in there for going some of these different aspects of the interview. They're also trying to put a date and time threshold on these offers. Oh, if you don't take it today, then it's going to be gone. If you don't take it by the end of the week, it's going to be gone. Remember that you're in control here. I understand it may not seem that way, especially if you're only interviewing at one company and don't be arrogant about this. Just remember, don't take something that you're not 100% satisfied with and make sure you understand your options. You can very well have multiple offers down the line if you're in the interview process of a couple different companies, but one company says, hey, you got to take it right now or it's going to be gone. I understand the old adage of, you know, one in the hand is better than two in the bush, but remember that this is a worker's market and you have more leverage than what they're trying to give you. That is why they're trying to hire you so fast is because they want you to work for them instead of uh, entertaining all these other offers. That is exactly why they're doing that, just like you see on Shark Tank. They say, okay, I'll give you this much money for this percent, but you have to answer me right now. Commit. I want a partner who commits. That's what they're all about. Don't listen to all these other sharks. If you don't take it, I'm out. You now have a bona fide offer from the only Mr. Wonderful you're ever going to meet. That's what a lot of employers are trying to do. Be wary of that because you're in control. And I know it's easy for me to say because I'm not looking for a job right now, but I can attest to the fact that there are a lot of job openings, not only from the report, but my anecdotal evidence from so many different recruiters and companies reaching out to me via LinkedIn. And by so many, I mean a lot more than normal, as well as people even emailing me on my uh, my YouTube email. Now, I don't think it could be the same email that's hooked up to my LinkedIn, so they may be coming at me from that and just trying to go pass the messaging system to me directly, but I'm getting a, a lot more emails and a lot more messages on LinkedIn from recruiters trying to give me jobs that I'm not interested in, but take that for what it's worth. All of these reports that we're seeing and all of this anecdotal evidence that I'm seeing, then it's saying the same thing. And you can see that this is a worker's market because of how desperate they are with, I say desperate, they kind of are desperate. They're offering better sign-on bonuses and some companies that weren't before are offering sign-on bonuses as well as much better benefits in terms of pay time off. And one of the most important things is remote work. Now, when they offer you all of these things, including the permanent remote work, make sure you get that in writing. Make sure you get all of it in writing, but especially that because a lot of people are saying that uh, employers that is, you know, they'll promise you one thing, whether that be remote work now, whether that has been in the past, oh, we'll give you a salary increase, you know, a year from now based on your performance, but they can easily just say this and that about your performance and not give you a raise. All of that, especially this per, uh, permanent remote work, if that's very important to you, get it all in writing, in your contract, that's what you sign. And if they say anything about bringing you back to the office, you can just say no. <laughs> I have it in writing that I can work from home forever. So yeah, they may still try to fire you, but you have it in writing, so you have leverage. Let's just say that. And we'll get back to the remote work thing in a second because there are some downfalls that you need to look out for. But a quick note that they're also doing referral bonuses. Now I've never really heard of this before. So if you have seen something like this, especially the upper echelon, that is, okay, let me, let me talk about it first. They're doing referral bonuses. So if you work at a company and you have a friend who's a developer and you think they'd be a good fit for your company, they're saying we are willing to give you $3,000 referral bonus if they sign on and work for the next six months. And by sign on, I mean, you know, if we, if we hire them. And there are other companies that are saying we'll give you $10,000. And I've also heard accounts of $50,000 for a referral bonus of you bringing on a friend that gets hired and stays at the company for a certain duration of time. 50 grand. Now again, I've only heard this through one little article that I read, but I am interested to see if there are any actual, there's actual evidence from y'all. So leave a comment down below if you're working at a company that is offering something like this. You don't have to use your real name. You don't have to say at what company. You can actually send me a private email. I am just genuinely curious. So let me know, please. But back to the whole remote work thing, when you're getting hired at a different company, there are companies, big companies like Google, who are actually reducing the salaries that they are offering because they are taking out what they inflated for the inflated cost of living. So for example, if you work at Google, if you work in Raleigh, North Carolina, you're gonna get paid less for the same exact job as if you were to work over in San Francisco or wherever they're located in California because the cost of living is much, much higher over there. Y'all know how this works. So when you were working remote, they're saying, well, you know, we, we don't know where you live. We're not gonna pay for your higher cost of living because we're not forcing you to live near or in 
this particular area that has a high cost of living because you can work from wherever you want in the world. So be wary of that as well because they're trying to cut some costs in terms of salary, which doesn't really make much sense because if they can afford to pay you that amount and also pay for their office space, they could reduce their costs in terms of the office space if you're working at home, but they're also reducing the cost by taking the salary away from you. You see whether that's it's kind of dumb. Like I see where they're coming from, but at the same time, get what you're worth. And for all of the employers out there, you need to adapt. You have to understand that this is a worker's market as much as you would hate to admit it because you wish you were in control, but you have to adapt if you want to have the best talent that is in the market. But we're going to pretend real quick that I am top talent. I'm not, but we're going to pretend that I am. If I was top talent and I had to go to the office, I got paid, you know, let's say a hundred thousand dollars in, you know, wherever it may be. And, you know, I get you know, a week or two of paid time off. Okay. You know, that's, that's a job to consider. But then if there's another job that is saying you can work from anywhere, we can pay you a hundred thousand dollars and maybe even $150,000 and you get three weeks of paid time off. And I'm not talking about this unlimited paid time off that they really don't want you to take. I'm talking about actual paid time off that you earn and deserve and are going to take. But I mean, obviously one deal is much better than the other. So you're going to take the better deal. So for employers, not only do you have to adapt and get creative on how to hire new talent, you have to hold on to your current talent with both hands. Pay increases, bigger bonuses, increased paid time off, more flexibility, and more importantly, remote work because that is increasingly important to developer job roles. I think there's a statistic where it was about only 16 or 17% of tech workers wanted to work full time in the office while there's like 56 or 60% of them wanted to work from home. So obviously there's a lot more that want to work from home. So you have to make sure you keep them because they may be willing to work under your current restrictions right now, the current pay, the current pay time off, the current uh, working in office or even remote. But what happens when you have a job market like there is right now and there are a dozen other employers that are willing to give them more and they're willing to give them more flexibility, more money, more flexibility, more of every benefit that I just mentioned, but you're just staying content because they are doing the job under your current restrictions. Well, just know that they have no reason to stay with you. Don't think that company loyalty is a thing. Don't think all this because if someone's willing to pay me double what you're willing to pay me and I can work from home instead of coming into the office, I'm going to take that job. Now, obviously there are other variables based on the work in hand and how many hours I work a week and that type of stuff. But if everything is equal, except for the salary or even the remote work, I'm gonna go elsewhere. So that's what I wanted to say. This is a lot of information congregated from a lot of different sources, but I am going to uh, link down the main report, the DICE report down below. So if you want to read it yourself and get a little bit more information, a little bit more specific information as well, like a majority of college students are actually using Python and how Python is increasing like 15% year over year, or quarter over quarter, or something crazy like that. And Python, HTML, and CSS is the most popular thing on GitHub by students. No, not CSS, JavaScript, or maybe it's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and Python. Anyway. There's more information on that report, just a little bit. I went over most of it, so check it out. If you're looking for a job, just apply to a bunch of different places with a custom resume, and I hope you get to that interview and you can get past it. If you already have a job, look at your other options. You may be happy with where you're at, but you could be happier elsewhere as well. And if you're an employer, offer them what they're worth and keep up with the market. We increased from late 2019, late 2020, 3.6% in terms of salary. If your people did not see a pay increase of that, well, then you should be worried about them leaving. So in order to not be worried about them leaving, give them something, give them a pay increase, give them more paid time off, give them the ability to work from home. That's all I have to say on the matter. I hope y'all liked it. Subscribe to the channel. If you know, you have a YouTube account and you want to subscribe, like the video if you liked it and I'll see y'all in the next one.